What is up, guys, and welcome back to some more NCAA 06 football for you guys. We are doing the race for the Heisman with Daniel Mock. Just wrapped up his freshman year at Texas A&M as a wide receiver. We're about to get into the offseason, but before we do that, guys, if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. We are on the road to 1,000 subs. And if you haven't seen any of the previous episodes, make sure you go back on the playlist and watch them all from the beginning. But anyways, guys, before we get into the offseason, we are going to do one more comb through of the dorm room. First up, we have fan mail. Greetings, Daniel. Oh, man, I am positive that you have the most raw talent of anyone in the nation, and if anyone disagrees, all they need to do is watch you play. With a little more coaching, you are going to be an unstoppable force and a Heisman winner. Good luck, Claudia Walker. Taking a look at the newsletter. What do we got here? Conference clash. Aggies continue to raise the bar. Yep, hopefully we raise the bar in Daniel Mock's sophomore season. Going over to the computer, guys, it looks like we have another girlfriend. Daniel lately has just been going through a bunch of different girls. Uh, I think this is number four. This is only his freshman season. I'm really curious to see how many different girl pictures that they have in this game. Anyways, cute looking girl, brunette, bob cut. Ain't nothing wrong with that. One last thing before we start the offseason, guys, is we're going to go to the closet and we're going to take a look at Mox attributes. Right now, he is in 84 overall. Uh, let's see what he does. Let's see how much he improves in the offseason. Luckily, playing Race for the Heisman, I don't have to worry about any of these things. So we're just going to go straight down to start new season. I'll see you guys there. All right, guys. Well, here we go. We are in our sophomore year and we've got a brand new dorm room, guys. Let's check it out. Looks like we have a little bit more room. Previous dorm room had a bunk bed. Looks like we get a little bit of an upgrade here. Bigger bed, a lot more space. This is pretty cool. I'm glad that they actually do change the dorm rooms. That is a nice feature. Let's go ahead and look at the fan mail. Hey Daniel, there is no doubt in my mind that we will be playing for a national championship soon. We are on the cusp of greatness now. If we had a few more Heisman type players like you on the squad, these games would be merely a formality. All the best, Alfred Holland. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I do hope that we win a national championship here pretty soon. Let's look at the newsletter. Leading in talent. The Big 12 leads the nation in the number of All-Americans. All right, we got our boy Mock on the cover. Speaking of upgrades, let's take a look at Daniel Mock's attributes. He is an 87 overall now. He used to be an 84. Let's see. His speed was a 90. Now it is a 91. His strength was a 59. It is a 62. Awareness gets a bump from a 72 to a 78. His agility went up to a 90 from an 89. Same with acceleration. He went up one point from a 94 to a 95. Catching, that's always good that it went up. It went up to an 88 from an 86. Jumping, carrying were the same. Break tackle actually went up a little bit to a 65 from a 62. Everything else pretty much stayed the same. His stamina went up a couple points as well as his injury. Went from an 80 to an 82. Well, what do you know, guys? Boom, another girlfriend. This time we got the girl with the pigtails. Okay, I guess that puts our number to five. All right, now that we've gotten all the important things out of the way, let's take a look at the schedule this season. So we're going to be playing the Citadel, Army, Tulane, Texas Tech, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma State, Baylor, and then finally we get into some ranked opponents, number four, Oklahoma, Number 19, Nebraska, and then number 8, Texas. Let's go ahead and get some games in now in this episode. We're going to be playing the Citadel and Army. All right, guys, here we go. At Kyle Field, and this is now the toughest place to play in the nation. We're getting it started with the Citadel on offense. This is their first drive. Now, guys, I'm just going to let you know right now, the Citadel is not a good team. We're able to get a user sack on the first play of the game. Looking at a third and 16. Obviously, they're going to have to throw it deep. Quarterback goes outside, and there again is Rose for another sack. The dude's got two sacks on three plays. After the punt, the Texas and Aggie offense is lining up at the 35-yard line, already in Citadel territory. As you can see, guys, we got a new quarterback, McGee, number 19. He is a pure pocket passer. He is not going to be a guy that is going to win any foot races. And we're able to find Kendrick down the sideline, already into the red zone. Couple plays later, we're not able to get anything going, so we have to kick a field goal, and we miss it. You know what, I thought I had these field goals figured out, but I guess I do not. It is still a 0-0 ball game. 
After a couple first downs by the Citadel, they are looking to finally get into Aggie territory. Quarterback drops back under a little bit of pressure and throws an interception to Williams. Now, if you remember, this guy last year had a couple interceptions late in the season, and he is picking up right where he left off. Number 16, baby. He's excited. That's the first turnover of the game, and a is looking to strike. We're able to hit Mock for his very first completion of the season. Go plays later. We're looking to hit the end zone right here. We're going to be looking for R1 Dukes. Wide open in the corner. Throws a strike, and he scores a touchdown. This guy must be a true freshman or a redshirt freshman because he didn't play at all last year. I do not remember that last name, Dukes. After another three and out by the Citadel, the AM Aggie offense is back on the field, and we're working the corner out, baby. This time it is Daniels who catches the pass in front of the defender. Does a little showboating in his way to the end zone, baby. Everybody is scoring touchdowns today. Once again, the Citadel just not able to get anything going on offense, man. The AM defense is absolutely torturing this unit. That is the third sack of the game and the third one for Rose as well. That's going to force him into a punt. We got our running back back deep, Coleman. He's going to be our punt returner this year. And look at that boy fly going down the right sideline, doing a little spin move, and he will score a touchdown. I told you guys, the Citadel, they are not good. I am sorry that this is just basically a game where we're running up the score. Citadel once again trying to get something going. Pick six to the house, and it's your boy Williams again. Second interception of the game. Citadel trying to put that last interception behind him. Rolling out with the quarterback, and what do you know? Another pick six. This time it's the middle linebacker, number 10, Jacobs. And let's be honest, guys, at this point, I decided to put it on Heisman mode. I had it on All-American just because I wasn't comfortable playing on Heisman. And it looks like the Citadel might get something going here by uh, increasing the level of difficulty. Uh, halfback is able to make a couple yards. They're able to get a couple first downs. And they're trying to score right before the end of the half. And then what do you know? Another pick by Jacobs again. And it's another pick six. This dude by himself has scored two touchdowns today. Now, I hate to do this to the Citadel, but with 43 seconds left to go in the half, Daniel Mock really hasn't even done anything because the defense has been scoring touchdowns and the other receivers had. So we're going to try to get him some work in before the end of the half. McGee rolling out, almost gets sacked, but able to find Mock on a dig route across the middle of the field. That's going to be another first down. And with eight seconds left to go, we're just going to take a shot deep, see what happens. Mock is able to beat his man, jump up for the ball, and we're able to get the ball at the nine-yard line, calling a timeout. Now, that's just going to leave us with one second before the end of the half. We kick a field goal, and this time I actually make it. We're going to go into the halftime, guys, with a 44 to nothing lead right now. And as if we couldn't make matters worse, guys, we actually received the opening kickoff to start the second half. As you can see, guys, those ratings, it just shows you how bad the Citadel is. McGee rolling out, able to find Kendrick almost at midfield. We're just driving. We're looking to get Mock involved. Unfortunately, we make our only mistake of the game. Throwing a pick, didn't put enough air on that. And the Citadel, man, they are excited. They are in Aggie territory. They might have something going here. Citadel with their best field position of the game. Do a little play action pass. Number 13 is at quarterback, and he throws a pick to Burke. So... Whatever momentum that they had, they just lost it. And I think that's pick number five. And then now we get our own little celebration on the Texas A&M sideline. With A&M getting the ball at the 16, I feel like we're a little bit backed up, so we're going to throw the ball. We're going to find Daniels on the post route to the 40-yard line. That's going to give us more than enough room to do whatever we want to do now on offense. Now, for everyone out there watching this video thinking that I'm just going to be throwing the rock all day, every day, look at this, baby. We take it with Coleman. He's able to break free for a touchdown. The speedster able to run for a 59-yard TD. So it's not all about throwing it. I do run it every now and again. Citadel getting the ball back. 51 to nothing right now. Doing a play action pass. And again, they just can't get anything going. Another user sack. That is number five on the day for Ross. Citadel end up having to punt. And your boy back deep. Coleman. Trying to find an opening. He's able to find a lane down the left sideline. And the dude is gone again. No one's going to be catching him. He starts showboating at the 25-yard line. I cannot believe we didn't get a flag on that play. 82-yard punt return. Now on the ensuing Citadel offensive drive, they're able to get some first downs. But then they kind of stall out here almost in the red zone. 
fourth and five. They could easily kick a field goal right now and get that goose egg off the board, but they're choosing to go for it, and it doesn't work out for them. It's a sack by Jordan, second one of the game. With the AM offense back on the field, I think Mock has about four catches for 92 yards. We're going to try to get him over 100, so we're going to be looking for him often and early now, and he's able to pick up the first down on the very next play. Crowd likes that. Doing the wave. The 12th man is loud and proud today. Picking up action in the fourth, guys. It is 58 to nothing. McGee going wide, looking for Mock Deep, able to make a back shoulder catch for the touchdown. 64 to nothing, guys. After another three and out by the Citadel, we're looking just to put this game to bed, trying to get a first down on third and four, and we're able to find Mock on another drag route, and then he's able to break one tackle, sprint down the sideline, and do a little showboating to the crowd. That is going to make the game 71 to nothing, guys. After the extra point, it is 72 to nothing, and that is how it will end. I just got tired of scoring. I eventually just started taking these, running the ball out, making sure the clock goes all the way down to zero. There's no reason to try to put 80 on these boys. Uh, it's hard enough to come down into Aggie land. Number one place to play in the nation as far as toughness and not to score a point. It's pretty sad, but that's what you get when you play AM when you're the Citadel. Looking at the stats and scores, let's go to individual stats. Get into receiving Daniel Mock, seven catches, 183 yards, two touchdowns. Daniels, three receptions, 113 yards. Kendrick, two for 41. Dukes, one for 37 and a touchdown. Coleman, one for seven. More importantly, guys, no drops. That's what I like to see. After that ridiculous win, guys, let's go ahead and go around the dorm room, see what's new. Let's go to the newsletter. Let's see here. Early favorites, Texas A&M should take home the conference title in 2006. Wow. I think we're going to win the conference. Okay. Fan mail. Yo, Daniel. I'll go ahead and say it. You are on pace for a breakthrough year. Everything is coming together for you at just the right time. Don't stop now. You are on the verge of greatness. A few more big games and the Heisman voters will take notice. Peace. Brian Hicks. Let's go ahead and take a look at the computer, go into the Heisman watch. So guys, we're not even on the Heisman watch right now. I know we have had two bye weeks, so that is probably the reason why we don't have a whole lot of stats to back up being on there. But there are two wide receivers that are on there right now. Um, so after this Army game, let's see if we can crack the top five. Hi everybody, Brad Nessler here, and with me as always, Kirk Herbstreit and Lee Corso. Cold and rainy conditions, the forecast for today's game between the Texas A&M Aggies and the Army Black Knights. We're ready to bring you what should be one intense football game. And here come the Black Knights. The Aggies are a confident bunch of kids, and rightfully so. Kirk, this team is just too powerful. Texas A&M comes into this football game led by their quarterback, and he's such a leader, Brad. Believe me, he won't buy into any of this pregame, we're going to blow him out hoopla. He's a focused competitor, and he'll be ready to play. Nice pick, Kirk. The Aggies are going to win this game. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Welcome to West Point. This is Army's home field. Very first play of the day. Simpson back deep, throwing it. Gets tip. Ends up getting picked off by number 96, Hunter. And it seems like this is just going to be the exact same game that we just finished playing with the Citadel. Let's see if we can get a replay right here. Who got the batted pass? 89 is able to bat the ball down. 96 again with the interception. Leaving us in great field position a and offense. We're looking just to pound it with Coleman. He's able to find some room on the left side. Scores a touchdown with ease. And then, man, straight up disrespect in the field goal pad. On Army's next offensive series, they are facing a third and 15. Simpson looks flustered. He's able to find Hill, his running back, in the flats. The speedster is able to go all the way down the field, get the first down, and get to the 40-yard line for the Black Knights. Facing another third down, Simpson looking, finding Todd, getting him into Aggie territory. A couple plays later, they're looking to get Hill the ball right here. Following that fullback, he's able to spring it down the last hash mark for another first down. After the Texas A&M defense is able to get a couple holds, it is third and 10. Will they be able to convert three third downs in a row? No, they are not. Quarterback gets flustered. Jacobs takes advantage of it, gets another interception. That is his third one on the year. The dude is playing with absolute confidence early in the season. 
AM offense hitting the field again, looking to convert points from that turnover. We're going to hit it to Coleman, get it to the outside on the left. Spin move, able to pick up the first down with ease. I think that's about a 16-yard gain. McGee dropping back, going to his right. Can't find anybody open. Able to find Kendricks late for another first down. AM offense is driving. McGee looking. Finding Daniels, middle of the field, huge hit after the catch. It is a fumble, and the defense recovers it. Army is hanging in here against this Texas A&M Aggie team. Let's see if Army is able to tie the score up with a little bit of momentum. Simpson looking, trying to find a receiver, throwing against the crane, and it gets picked off. This time by number 20, Morris. A&M has great field position at the 35-yard line. Talk about another momentum shift in this game. A&M, knowing that we need to get some points, we're just going to rely on our boy Coleman. Hitting him with the screen right here. We hardly ever run screens. Able to do a little spin move to the outside. And Coleman going in for his second touchdown of the game. If we don't watch out, Coleman is going to end up winning a Heisman with how he's playing this year. Looking at the replay, Coleman take that step inside just to bounce it out. Does some more showboat. And I'm surprised we haven't gotten any flags this year. After a couple first downs by this Black Knight offense, it is first and 10, ball on the 35. Armstrong comes around and gets the sack. After that sack, the Army offense was not able to recover. They end up attempting a long 45-yard field goal, trying to get the goose egg off the board, and they have done it. The kick is good. Texas A&M offense back on the field, looking for more points. Coleman! Spin move, baby. Call him the human tornado. Every time he does the spin move, he jukes everybody out. He's going to take it to the house. Doesn't get sucked up by number five. Got enough speed to make it to the end zone for a 76-yard touchdown run. Once again, Black Knights drove all the way down the field. Third and in inches, and they get stopped on the fullback carry, making it fourth and one, setting up for a 43-yard field goal, this time on the right hash. Kick is up, and it is no good. The kicker had the distance, just not the accuracy. With 56 seconds left to go in the second half, kind of like the same thing that happened in the Citadel. We're trying to get Mott going, you know. 44 seconds now. Five wide. McGee looking, trying to go deep to Mock. Doesn't throw a very good ball in double coverage, but Mock still comes down with it, bringing the ball all the way down to the 12-yard line. After a couple plays, McGee looking, trying to find somebody open. Can't find it. I don't know how to throw the ball away. It's L2. I looked in the manual, but we take a huge loss. Third and 30. McGee looking. Finding the corner route to Daniels. And wow, able to score a touchdown on third and 30. That increases our lead to 28-3 to at the half, guys. Picking up action in the second half, guys. The Texas A&M special teams is returning the kickoff. We got Coleman back deep at the one-yard line. He is going to take it, does a juke, runs down the sideline, and no one's going to catch him. This guy does it all. Running the ball for touchdowns, catching the ball for touchdowns, punt return touchdowns, kickoff return touchdowns. That, my friends, went for 99 yards, and it is now 35-3. to Black Knight offense takes the field, playing for pride, trying to get something going, trying to get a touchdown. Their backup quarterback, Claret, gets absolutely destroyed in the pocket. They're just not giving this guy enough time. All three Aggies converge on him at one time for the sack. That is going to bring up a fourth down punt. And guess who's back deep? Your man, Coleman, kicking it down the sideline. This is just too easy. You don't even give anybody in front of him. Once again, another touchdown for Coleman. I said it earlier. This dude is probably going to win the Heisman with how he's playing this year, doing it on special teams and offense. With a 41-3 lead, the Black Knights at midfield. They're actually starting to get a couple first downs. Claret, oh my gosh. Finally getting the ball out to Hill, their playmaker. And Jacobs was in the zone. Flat out destroys Hill. Causes him to fumble, picks it up, and returns it in for the touchdown, guys. 48-3. to I am not trying to run up the score. It just is what it is. You got a really good Texas A&M team against a really bad Army team. And it just keeps getting worse and worse. Next series, pick Birch. You know the story. Pick six. More points. 
And it actually looks like Claret is injured on that play. So they're down to their third string quarterback. McGee on offense looking, finding Daniels in the middle of the field. On the very next play, still wanting to get some receivers involved. I mean, Coleman's been running the show. McGee gets sacked, and that is going to be it for the game. Appears to be something wrong with his elbow. That is not a good sign. Hopefully he comes back. Davis, the backup, is in the game. Still looking to throw the ball. We're going to find Daniels running a 10-yard out. Facing a third and six. We're looking to move the chains. We're going to try to find Kendrick here in the flats. He's open, but we don't make an accurate pass. He still catches it, but that's going to bring up fourth and one. We decide to go for it. We're going to give it to your boy, Coleman. Flat out just outruns the defense. Number 41 was there. Had a chance to make the play, and Coleman was like, eh, eh. I'm just going to go further outside and road runner you do to the sideline and then to the end zone. Meanwhile, this Texas A&M defense keeps doing what it's doing, getting sacks, forcing turnovers, making life miserable for the Black Knights. After another three and out, we got to find some way to get Mock the ball. We're going to go deep with him, and McGee makes an outstanding throw. Over the shoulder catch, Mock able to run past his defender for a long touchdown of 64 yards, and that is the nail in the coffin, guys. Everybody in the crowd is going home. There is no reason to stay. Let's watch that replay again. Double coverage, but like I said earlier, McGee puts it only where Mock can come down with it. It is now 69-3. to Claret looking. And once again, this Texas A&M defense makes him pay. Jacobs with another pick six. I don't even know how many pick sixes he has had this year. I think that is number three on the season. Finally, it looks like the Black Knights are going to get a spark. Johnson returning the kickoff all the way back for a touchdown. Something they can hang their hat on. But wait, there is a flag on the play. Is it on the Black Knights? If it is, this is absolutely heartbreaking. Yes, clipping by the Black Knights. Wow. Well, guys, another lopsided victory. Put it in the books. 76-3. to I promise you guys, I am not trying to make these blowouts. I have not changed the settings. If anything, I've made them a little bit harder. It's just that in this episode, when you had the Citadel and Army, both of these teams are really, really bad. Uh, our schedule is about to get a lot harder, guys. Trust me. I'm not trying to blow out these teams. Looking at receiving on the day, guys. Jay Daniels went 4 for 91 with a touchdown. Daniel Mock, 3 for 126 and one touchdown. Kendrick, 2 for 18. And Coleman, 1 for 36 and a touchdown. And just like the last game, guys, no drops. All right, guys, we are back in the dorm room. We're going to do a quick look around, go to the newsletter. Midseason form, Coleman is mentioned on everybody's Heisman list. Wow, so now we got Coleman, the running back, getting mentioned on the Heisman list. I wonder where that leaves Daniel. Hello, Daniel. You're starting to make big plays on a consistent basis. That is a very encouraging sign. I had my doubts about you when you arrived, but the more I watch you play, the more I'm starting to take a shine to you. Keep it up. From Marty Bunkner? Brunkner? Are you kidding me, dude? You had doubts about me? You gotta be kidding me. Let's take a look at the computer. Look at the watch list. Daniel Mock is not on the list, but we got that boy Jay Coleman. So we're still trying to put in some work. Trying to get Mock on the Heisman watch list. Let's take a look at the closet and see what his stats are on the year. So he's not doing too bad. 10 catches, 309 yards, and 3 touchdowns. So the stats are going to come. Like I said, we had two bye weeks going into this season. And uh, we'll catch up. We'll eventually get on that Heisman watch. That's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe because we are on the road to 1,000. I'm the coach, and I'm out.